u divided by u. Before moving on to questions related to the indeterminacy, it should be noted that the most practical method for the indeterminacy of zero divided by zero is L'Hopital's rule. However, in some exams, L'Hopital's rule may not be allowed, or the student might not know how to take derivatives. In such cases, how do we solve the questions? We will talk about this. Our first question is the indeterminacy of zero divided by zero. When you substitute five for x, the top part, 25 minus 25, is zero. The bottom part also makes 25 plus five, which is 30. It's coming from negative 30, which to zero. So let's factor it. The top part is x squared minus 25. I'm going to think of it as the square of x squared minus five. From here, if we apply the difference of squares, we can factor it as x minus 5 times x plus 5. On the bottom part, it has given x squared plus x minus 30. I factored x squared as x and x, and I also factored negative 30 as plus 6 and minus 5. In this case, we have x plus 6 times x minus 5. If we substitute these in the top part, x minus 5 times x plus 5. On the bottom part, we got x plus 6 times x minus 5. I simplified the x minus 5 terms. Limit as x approaches 5. I found it to be x plus 5 over x plus 6. Now I'm substituting 5 for x. The top is 10, and the bottom is also 11. So we find the answer to the question is 10 over. So we get 10 over 11. The second question also involves the expression x under 4, 16, x, 2, as x approaches 2. When you substitute 2 for x, you get 4. Since the power is 16, 0 from 16, 16, and below that, 0 comes from 2, 2. Here I will do some factoring. First, I will write x to 4, 16 as, I will write it as the square of x squared minus the square of 4. If you use the difference of squares from here, you get x to 4 times x to plus 4. But I couldn't obtain the expression below. So this right here is x squared minus 4. I transformed it back into the difference of squares by saying x squared minus 2 squared. So I wrote it as x 2 times x plus 2. In this case, the top becomes x 2 times x plus 2 times x2 plus 4 has resulted. I simplified the x2 terms, so the limit as x approaches 2, x plus 2 times became x squared plus 4. A question, when I substitute 2 for x, I find this to be 4. I find this to be 8. So the answer to my question is 32. The third question is, as x approaches 4, x squared minus 3x minus 4, divided by the square root of x, minus 2. The expression has been asked, when you substitute 4 for x, I get 16 minus 12, which is 4, and from the top, 4 minus 4 gives me 0. Since the square root of 4 is 2, I find 0 from 2 minus 2. Now let's start factoring here, x squared minus 3x minus 4 x squared is the product of x and x. It's the product of negative 4 and positive 1. From here, we find that the expression above is x minus 4 times x plus 1. But that's not enough for our question, because there is square root of x minus 2 in the denominator. In a question like this, you need to think about this. The expression I referred to as x is actually the square of the square root of x. With this information, I can write x minus 4 like this. The square of the square root of x minus the square of 2. 
Of course, since we created a difference of squares here, we can factor this as square root of x minus 2 times square root of x plus 2. So the upper part, the square root of x minus 2 times the square root of x plus 2 times. So we have x plus 1. I simplified the square root of x minus 2. As x approaches 4, I have simplified the question to square root of x d plus 2 times x plus 1. Now, if I substitute 4 for x, this becomes node 2. So my first factor is 4. My second factor is 5. From here, we find that the answer to the question is 20. The fourth question is about the limit. As it approaches x3, given as 2 minus the square root of x plus 1 over 3 minus x. If you substitute 3 for x, you get 2 minus the square root of 4, which equals 2. So you find 0 on top. You find 0 below 3 minus 3. In this question, it's not possible to directly factor. That's why, when you encounter a question like this, it's best to start by calling the radical expression u. So, I'm calling the square root of x plus 1 u. Then I said, u squared uh, is x plus 1. I squared both sides up there, plus 1 thrown over to the other side. We get u squared x minus 1. I found it to be equal. Now let's rearrange the question again. This time, let the limit tell you approach u. If x is approaching 3, I took the square root of 3 plus 1, which is 4. And that gives me 2. u is approaching 2. The top part is 2 minus. We already called this u. That's why I can write here. It's 2 minus u. The bottom part is 3 minus. Instead of x squared, u squared minus 1. I'm writing, if we tidy up this equation, 2 minus u over, it makes 4 minus u squared. I'm thinking of 4 minus. u squared is the square of 2 minus. u, u squared. So I'm applying the difference of squares. 2 minus u times 2 plus u. From here, By simplifying, I got rid of the 2 u's. So, as the limit approaches u2, we got 1 over 2 plus u. Ooh. By writing 2 in place, we found the answer to the problem as 1 over 4. The fifth question is m and n for real numbers. As x approaches 2, the limit of mx plus 12 divided by x minus 2 is equal to n. Then it was asked what the sum of m and n is equal to. Now, if you substitute 2 for x here, 2 me plus 12 divided by 0, we find that n is equal to. But the division of something by 0 cannot be a real number. Here, you need to understand this idea. So when taking the limit, we encountered 0 divided by 0 because the denominator is 0. That means the numerator will also be 0. From here, uncertainty resolved. The answer is uh, the number n. In this case, the first thing I need to do is to say that 2 men plus 12 is equal to 0. So, do me, x equals 12, m equals who? 6. I have found the first expression that was asked of me. Let's rewrite the question by substituting this in. As x approaches 2, it became negative 6x, that is, plus 12, divided by x, minus 2. I factored out negative 6 from the top, e minus 2. And below there's x minus 2. I simplified it. From here, I found the limit. To be negative 6, the question told us that the limit is equal to n. So the value of n is negative 6. 
In this case, the answer to the question would be negative. 12. 